Hi everyone, so what I'm going to go through now at ASFC Chemistry is the enthalpy profile diagrams. So what they are for exo and endothermic reactions. Now the first thing is, you can see on each of these two here, I am going to be starting with two lines and I can tell straight away that this one is going to be the exo diagram and I can tell straight away that this one is going to be the endo based on the position of these lines. For the exo, the reactants have got more energy than the products because the reactants give out energy in an exothermic reaction to the surroundings. Whereas here, the reactants have got less energy than the products because an endothermic reaction takes in energy to push up the energy of the total system. And so the products should have more energy. So that's an easy spot right there. The next thing I need to do is for both of them, I need to connect them together by sort of a curved shape of lines. So this one, I'm going to go this way. It doesn't matter which way I go because you can never tell at the end anyway. And for this one, I'll go that way as well, since that diagram seems so successful. There we go. So it's the end of the two lines, really, but don't worry too much about it. It's not the end of the world. Now, what do these two lines help us with? Well, what you can see here is some energy appears to be put in and then given straight back out again. So overall, the actual energy change of this top part here doesn't matter to the overall energy change of the reaction. Because whatever is put in seems to be given back out again. And then down here, we actually have a difference in energy between the reactants and the products. So what was this bit? Well, we draw an upwards pointing arrow from an extension of this line to the very top of the curve that we've drawn. And we can label this as the activation energy. That's the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to occur upon collision. Now, the difference between the reactants and the products line, if we just extend this line out, like so, you can just do it with a dotted line, just down straight from this line then, can extend that right to the line there, this would be my enthalpy change of the reaction, delta RH. Now this is exothermic, so this might be a negative number, so for example this actually might be minus 100, but don't label that as minus delta RH. Just a downwards pointing arrow will tell us that this is negative and that label will suffice. The activation energy, as you can see, then is an upwards pointing arrow because activation energies are always positive. Whereas enthalpy changes can be positive or negative, activation energies are always positive because you've got to put in that extra energy. Now the endo shows some very similar features. For the endo one, we can see a common feature that we've just seen in the exo. For the exothermic, if you extend that line and then you connect the reactance line level to the top of the curve, then that gave you the activation energy. Now it looks much bigger, but that's effectively what we've got. This is our activation energy. I have to get over that bump in order to start the reaction. And so this would be labeled as the EA. Now the actual enthalpy change of the reaction would be another upwards arrow from the reactants to the products line, which is the same in both of them as well. And that would be the delta RH. It always looks like this one is a little bit wrong, but trust me, this is exactly how it's meant to be drawn. And notice, these are both two upwards pointing arrows because they're both endothermic numbers. Whereas here we had an exothermic number, so this was a downwards pointing arrow. In the real exam, don't just write R and P, actually label on what those reactants and products are. Remember that the activation energy is always the reactants to the top of the curve, in either diagram, and that the enthalpy change is always the difference between reactants and products, as you can see here, and the arrow tells you what sign that should have. An early prediction as well about the enthalpy diagrams can be made from the position of the two reactants and products levels to tell you whether energy is given out to the surroundings or taken in from the surroundings, respectively. Final thing I want to label on for you is what happens if we add a catalyst. Now, if you add a catalyst, you are lowering the activation energy. So you should find that the arrow size needs to be depleted. So for this one, we just simply change the top peak curve height like so. So that becomes E cat. And for this one over here, we have to do a little bit more work so we can carry on as normal up here, but then change it like that. And so the E cat is still quite a big number but it's still smaller than what it was. 
Endothermic reactions, as you can see, normally have higher activation energies than exothermic, but we kind of anticipate that. Think of the example of a thermal decomposition, for instance. Thermal decomposition requires a lot of energy, and it's an endothermic reaction, so it requires a lot of energy there to get going, quite a high temperature. I hope that clears up some of the work Exam questions tend to stick to one of these two, but they also tend to ask you about numbers. So for instance, what they could do is, on this one here, you could have two of a certain product, and it could be the only product there, and they could say, what's the enthalpy change of formation for P? Well, the enthalpy change of formation is the formation of one mole of P from its elements under standard conditions. And so since two are made here, all you'd have to do is say the enthalpy change and divide it by two to find out what the enthalpy change from making one mole of P was be from this actual diagram. They occasionally do things like that. Or they give you data and they say how much energy is required to react 10 decimeters cubed of the reactants. And you've got to figure out how many moles of the reactants that would be for and compare it to the number of moles you have here that have been formed or reacted using the diagram's enthalpy change. It's all about context for that, so it's hard to predict what they could do. Hopefully now you're a bit more familiar with the numbers though. I'll leave you to the rest of the playlist for now. Don't forget you can tweet us at ASFC underscore chemistry. Leave a comment below if you want to ask more questions. And until then, happy revising.